previously got completely wasted in Xanti, quit taking prescription medication, and next, I say ni hao to China. In my second year of uni, taking part in the Study China program further opened my eyes to just what the world has to offer if you just reach out. I've been finding actually Chinese culture, because it's so ancient, has, has really already thought about a lot of the problems we face nowadays. I mainly stayed in Shanghai and Beijing, and this is in fact the most polluted part of the world. The smog there is actually like, I was taking pictures the first day I got there. I'm really looking for a, a destination to move to more permanently where the diet is ideal for me. Here in China, there's a lot of fried meat, a lot of flour, a lot of rice. At least here in the cities, it reminded me of the West cities. Really rich, heavy food. But I do feel it could have been the stress over the new foods. But there was something that made me leave China in the worst state that compared to when I arrived. Traveling has only made me appreciate what there is an offer around the world, e.g. towards a healthier lifestyle that's more in the sun, slightly slower and less polluted than London. In my third year, a BBC2 production team emailed me inviting me to apply to their reality TV show called The Big Allotment Challenge Series 2. This opened my eyes further. I got my own garden and all the materials to grow my best produce ever. I was given pocket money by the producers, met cameramen who shot some of the biggest films around, met Fern Britton, got my own five-star hotel suite four days a week for over three months. Even though I was voted out in the first week, I took this as the biggest personal victory ever, as well as obviously introducing me into media. I was doing this TV show around my final exams for my engineering degree. This was the most intense time I've ever gone through. Funnily enough, I was actually trying the Atkins diet starting out at the very same time I started the show. Looking back, I should have interrupted my third year. I would have won. Rob had nothing on me. And the Atkins diet, this is a super fad. Too much meat with nothing else just acidifies your body into disease. To be honest, this experience really taught me how TV can manipulate the truth. I was the most positive, happy, excited person to do my passion, but they played me out as a student who didn't care. But looking back on it, less is more. I should have made more time for this once in a lifetime opportunity. My point is, if you reach out, someone will grab your hand. That same summer, I applied and got picked to take part in the Study India program. And well, afterwards, I made a video about my experience and by my standards, it went viral, some 16,000 plus views. My subscribers are telling me to come back and it would have been great to meet them. This kind of sowed a seed in my head. India was amazing. It introduced to me yoga and a country with the largest amount of vegetarians in the world who somehow survive. Apart from amazing coconuts, I don't think the fruit was the best, which is what I'm looking for now. Coming back, I was so inspired to sell vegan gluten-free doses I discovered in southern India and run a street food store before making a food truck. It wasn't that simple, I found, but what a ride. After India, I was inspired to fast. I fasted for 42 days with just one glass of freshly pressed vegetable juice per day. And my blood results have never been so good, ever. But the problem was I lost a lot of weight, a lot of muscle. But you can't maintain it long term, of course. Well, unless you fast once a week, which is very doable. This was the proof I needed with scientific blood test results that everything is in our hands. Simple. I'm not saying fasting will cure everything. What I'm saying is there are real options that are better than medication. Searching for experience, I stumbled upon a juice kiosk caf that was about to open at UCL, where they wanted to actually allow a student to open it. It was it was a great time. 
I pivoted slightly on my original idea, but I ended up opening up a sourdough pizza street food business. I figured sourdough is the ancient form of bread. You can't get better than this. But it really didn't agree with me. Just as bad as white processed bread. But most importantly, running a food business gave me a real insider's understanding. You couldn't learn this anywhere else. But this experience really showed me, as the business owner working in every spare second, that with not much time, you always go for the most satisfying, quick, cheap options. For me, it was sometimes crisps or gluten-free biscuits in my worst situations, but you can't cheat the body. And I fled, I fled again. And that's why I see it's so key to get a good routine that you do every day, not a one-off apple, <laughs> but every day. Despite it being really hard work, it was the passionate kind of stress I loved. However, I did burn out trying to marry my passion with a full-time job just to make the money work. No one should work 100 plus hours every week, come on. By this point, I was 22 and my doctor was like, finally, Matt, I can see medications have a minimal effect upon you. I advise you just make an effort looking after yourself. That's essentially what he said. I took an interruption to my last year of my PGC masters when my health became critical. At this time, my mum spent £2,000 to go to an alternative folk medicine health clinic in Poland for two weeks, which got me back on course. I put a lot of weight on through that, and that doesn't usually happen. And it really taught me what I need to do to keep my body thriving. Like, we are all car engines. We just can't abuse it, can we? Like putting the wrong petrol in, for example, to a diesel engine. And that includes foods that are named gluten-free, vegan, that are really highly processed and clearly bad for you. But by this point, I was really scared of my disease and I was just hoping for anything because I was tired of seeing that skinny, weak zombie in the mirror. It was time to get real. Now I work to create a holistic lifestyle. Slowing down, exercising, yoga, juicing, smoothies, water, 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 sunbathing, traveling, sourcing food direct from the farmer eating no bread, no grains, no red meat, and less animal products apart from fish, and going to try veganism again now that I'm more experienced. Massages, warm relationships, soreness, steam rooms, a passion for what I do, it all matters. But then I got an email about a video competition for Study China alumni with free cash prizes for first, second, and third places. I made a video on my China experience and got second place and 300 quid cash. I saw this could work. And now this is my most creative release that I really enjoy. And one that I hope will create a real positive message. So if you don't see me at real work, then you will find me working on something for born again. Soon after I got back onto my feet, I took a little break in Prague and increasingly saw lifelong relationships that highlighted my character with a mate being like, he would actually watch me. I was like, really? Mixed up between this, my pizza oven broke. My van completely died. With no contingency, I kind of was forced to sell the rest of my equipment and now I'm just focusing on health. These last eight months, I've been working out at least three times a week, eating a lot more nutritious food. I don't get breathless anymore or so tired. I forgot again what cramps are like, thankfully. And I am just happy at the moment. And that's, that's it. That's all I need. And I really believe actually stressing about health can in itself be really bad. So just trying to take a pinch of salt one step at a time. If anyone's creating music, send it my way, or any suggestions, send it my way.